God comes with us to address all these things, day by day, street level stuff. Heaven comes down to be with us for these things, to address these very issues. So you won't be alone. You'd be amazed. The big, strong, capable guys had that conversation with him. So we're not in the dark. You'd be amazed. Apparently, very, very worked out, sorted people had that conversation with him. Guilty. Again. Christ comes down to address these issues, to be God with us, and as if to say, come on, we can sort this out. Let's get back on track here. I'll be with you. How? How did that come about? Very, very briefly. Our fundamental problem, of course, is as, as, as we've been defining it. Very common in this life to find our fundamental problems are not quite what we think they are. Everybody's got an analysis of what would make the absolute difference so that their life was completely different. Well, God comes along and he says this, the big problem is you've been without me. You've been without me. Here's the key to it, here's the fundamental building block, and you've just taken your, you've taken your little Lego block and you've lobbed it. And the key's missing. And all these things are the things that follow. What are you going to do about that? Well, He's going to come and bear our nature. We know that's what Christmas is about, don't we? Because you know, God became man and there he is in the pot on the stable thing. It's called manger. That's the word I'm looking for. I should know that by now. And there he is in the manger and you know, he's with us. And he's bearing our human nature. Can you imagine what that must be like? I mean, just take this through a minute. What we're saying here is that God becomes a baby. Yeah? God. God who knows what it's like to fly with the angels comes and, you know, learns to crawl. What a sacrifice is that? He who knew the tongues of men and of angels subjected himself to Hebrew classics. I feel them. That's a big deal, you know. He must love me quite a lot. A big trivial, but it, it's such a significant constraint on him. What he gives up. To take upon himself our human nature, because there were things we were too weak to give up ourselves. Until he comes be with us and starts sorting the deal out. Came and bore our nature. Came and bore our temptation. We, we don't reckon on that. You don't hear that much, do you? You know, Jesus is coming to ultimately die on the cross for our sins, right? Now, if he's got sins of his own to die for, that's it, he's dealing with his own debt. But if he's going to be able to deal with my debt, he's got to be debtless to start with, isn't he? That makes sense in English? Right. Okay, just tell me if it doesn't, because I'm tired too. I'm Right? So he's got to be debtless. So if he's going to be debtless, he's got to be without sin. But if he's not tempted, he can't be without sin the way we you know, should have been and hadn't been. If he's going to pay the price for our sin by his death, then he's going to have to be not only counted as righteous, but unrighteousness should have had to have been a very live option as well. He bore all the sort of temptation that we do, and he did it so that he could bear all our sin. And if he hadn't done, he wouldn't have been able to. And he came bearing our sin. Bearing our nature, bearing our temptation, bearing our sin. He's more than a babe. Because most babes are born and will die. Right? You don't have to think that, do we? You don't think that way, do you? Most came and will die, but he came to die. To pay the price of my sin. To take away that alienation from God that I can't actually live with. To pay the price of my sin so that I can be reunited with God. To be God with me now. Not against me. You know, it was when sin entered the world that death came in here too. And it's not biology that determines your disease, but theology. There are people out there trying to work on ways to, you know, make us live longer. 
perish the thought, um, with this sort of life, you know. It's not biology that determines it, it's, it's theology. The wages of sin is death. But the free gift of God is eternal life through Christ Jesus our Lord as we're pulled back in to the relationship we should have had all along with our Creator. What difference does it make then for Jesus to be Emmanuel, to be God with us? So get plugged back in again, isn't it? Back into where we should be, back into the relationship, the fundamental relationship that colours and equips for the rest of our lives. Having paid the price of sin, sin's wages all disappear, which is good, because sin ends you the very things you really don't want. The very things you don't want. And you know, we've come to Christmas and we've been thinking about babies and we've sung away in a manger. Yeah, we've got that one in pretty early on. You've clear that out the way, haven't you? We've done that stuff, but bear this in mind. He's much more than a baby. He's much more than a nice little story for the kiddies. He's so much more than the subject matter for the nativity play, which we all enjoy. He is the one who comes to deal, to be God with us, to deal with the alone, to deal with the dark, to deal with the guilty, to deal with the things that eat away at and destroy from the inside rebellious human life. Remember the government was on his shoulder. Remember he came to the king. And ever since, that fall of the sin in the first place, people have been saying, we will not have this man to rule over us. That's where it's all come from, that's where the problems arise. And that's where the loneliness, and the darkness, and the guilt, and the sheer frustration, the disruption of all that will be good in our lives stems. And that's why one has come to be God with us, our whole world.